Hello and welcome to the PV Tech Newscast. The headlines this week. The US ITC votes to proceed with the latest Solar World trade case. Taiwanese cell manufacturers face a sales dip in March, say Energy Trend. Applied materials continue downsizing their solar operations. Solar Frontier post their first annual profit as cost reductions top 20%. And according to Navigant, the mining industry will be 5% powered by renewables by 2022. The US International Trade Commission has ruled that an investigation into anti-dumping and countervailing duties for solar cell products from China and Taiwan will go ahead, following a preliminary phase vote in Washington DC this Friday. The issue of anti-dumping and countervailing duty on solar cells from Taiwan and China was initiated by a complaint to ITC raised by Frank Asbeck and his company SolarWorld. The complaint, raised in 2013, was the second such complaint in two years brought to the ITC by SolarWorld over anti-dumping practices. The 2012 complaint centred on solar cells produced in China, which Asbeck and SolarWorld argued were negatively affecting the competitiveness of PV cells produced in the US. The most recent complaint focused on the alleged practice of companies circumventing duties on cells produced in China by instead using manufacturing facilities in Taiwan. Speaking to PV Tech earlier this month, Richard Viner of law firm Sidley Austin, who is representing the Chinese manufacturers, said the standard of review in the preliminary phase is very low. The bar that they have to step over is simply that there is a reasonable indication of material injury. And so the vast majority of cases are continued and it's determined later on if there is an injury. As a result of the US ITC's recent determinations, the US Department of Commerce is expected to continue its investigations on imports with a preliminary countervailing duty determination due on or around March the 26th this year. According to Taiwan-based market research firm Energy Trend, Taiwan-made solar cell shipments were around 6.5 gigawatts in 2013, in which the major export countries were China, Japan, Germany, US, Malaysia and the UK, representing 83% of total shipments last year. However, Energy Trends said that although Taiwan sell shipments directly to the US accounted for around 5% of the total, around 50% of that 6.5 gigawatts headed indirectly to the US via Chinese module manufacturers. On news of the ITC decision, Solar World Industries America claimed in a statement that the Chinese government was sponsoring PV manufacturers in their country via illegal export intensive subsidies and artificially and temporarily low pricing tactics to undermine them. Meanwhile, the Taiwanese government is providing legal and advisory support to Taiwanese solar cell companies embroiled in the investigation. Energy Trend also say that Taiwanese cell and wafer manufacturers are expected to see a slowing down in sales next month, as this latest phase in the US-China trade dispute takes effect. Although sales to the US and Japan are expected to gather pace this month based on orders placed in January, Trendforce said a combination of the US trade investigation and the end of Japan's fiscal year would mean lower revenues in March. It said major manufacturers such as Trina Solar, Yingli, Rene Solar and Jinko Solar have placed up to 90 megawatts of orders to Taiwanese manufacturers, but these will decline in the following month. In a continued effort to return its Energy and Environmental Solutions division to the point of breaking even, despite two years of downsizing and restructuring, Applied Materials said it had reduced EES spending per quarter to 25 million US dollars. Management noted that EES was expected to more than double net sales in the second fiscal quarter. However, according to its first fiscal quarter of 2014, Applied's EES sales were down 9% quarter on quarter to 40 million dollars. The EES restructuring plan, which was initially discussed in March 2012, had a goal of lowering the division's annual revenue break-even point to $500 million by the end of its 2013 fiscal year. The continued downturn in capital spending due to chronic overcapacity across the supply chain meant that the company accelerated the downsizing over the last year. Although the PV industry is in a new expansion phase due to increased global end market demand, sectors primarily served by applied materials have to recover. Leading CIS thin film PV module manufacturer Solar Frontier reported its first annual profit in 2013, fueled by the boom in the Japanese market. This newfound profitability was said to have been due to increased module shipments, operating at full capacity and manufacturing cost reductions of 20%. Solar Frontier's main 900 megawatt Kunitomi plant was said to have operated at full capacity from the start of 2013, while its Miyazaki plant, with an annual production capacity of 60 megawatts, also resumed production in July last year. 
Module shipments in the fourth quarter of 2013 approached 300 megawatts, up from around 200 megawatts shipped in the previous quarter. In the first nine months of last year, Solar Frontier had surpassed total shipments achieved in the whole of 2012. Solar Frontier plans to increase its focus on the Japanese residential market in 2014 after launching lighter weight modules and a new roof mounting system to reduce installation times and balance of system costs. By 2022, at least 5% of the global mining industry's power demand will be met by renewable energy generation, according to a report by research firm Navigant. The firm argues that drivers within the mining industry to adopt renewable energy, such as the need to ease strain on national grids in areas where mining comprises a significant portion of the region's economic activity, will only increase in the medium term. According to the firm, 493 megawatts of solar PV is expected to be deployed in the mining industry by 2022, from a total of 1,438 megawatts of renewable energy generation across the sector. Navigant also looked at various storage technologies and the possibilities provided by pumped hydro, compressed air and various forms of batteries, including vanadium redox. Examining the market geographically, Navigant expects the Asia-Pacific region to see the greatest deployment of mining industry renewable energy in the world with around 505 megawatts. In examining base case and aggressive future scenarios, Navigant claims the final percentage could be as much as 8%. The report argues that even in the economic downturn, drivers for adopting renewable energy in the mining industry remain strong. Political pressure, volatility of diesel prices and the need to reduce other energy costs and carbon footprint has seen what Navigant calls an expansion of market opportunities for renewable energy providers to work with mining companies. And that's all for this edition. Make sure to tune in next Tuesday and in the meantime you can keep up to date with all the very latest news via our website and our Twitter feed. Thanks for watching.